we are still busy with common fractions and we are going to focus on the percentages of common fractions. A percentage is an amount out of 100 that can be written as a fraction with a denominator of 100. So it's something out of 100. Something at the top, at the bottom you have 100 or in decimal form. For example, 60%. So since we see the percent, we know we need 100 at the bottom. The 60 therefore has to go to the top. We can cancel zeros if we are dividing. So it's the same as 6 over 10. If we divide and we have a zero, remember we have an invisible comma zero here. If we divide the zero jump to the left, or not the zero, rather the comma jump to the left. So we end up with zero comma six. That is decimal form. So percentage we can write in fraction form or in decimal form. So let's use exercise 13.10 to illustrate how to deal with percentages, how we can manipulate them. So for number one, we have to convert into percentage form 24 over 75. So whenever you have a fraction that needs to be converted to percentage, it is simply a matter of multiply by 100 over 1. As we know, a percentage is something out of 100. So we need to take this fraction and simply multiply by 100 over 1. So now let's see uh, what can go into 75 and into 100. Well, 25 can go into 75 three times. 25 can go into 100 four times. Four times 25 is a 100. Hmm. And then I think there's something that can go into 3 and 24. Because 2 plus 4, if we add the digits, we get 6. 3 can go into 6 twice. So 24 is divisible by 3. Whenever you add the digits of a number, and that sum you can divide by 3 without remainder, then it means the whole number is in fact divisible by 3. So 3 can go into itself once, 3 go into 24 8 times, 8 times 3 is 24. Now we have top of 8 times 4, which is 32, we are allowed to multiply tops, we are allowed to multiply bottoms, 1 times 1 is 1. We know 32 divided by 1 is simply 32. So this is percentage. Remember your percentage sign. There's a big difference between 32 and 32 percent. So you try number B on your own. For those that are still scratching their heads, first step you have a mixed fraction, so change into a improper fraction. So let's change this mixed fraction into an improper fraction. So the strategy is take the whole number, multiply by the denominator or the bottom number. So 1 times 10 is 10. Add the top number or the numerator. So we have 1 times 10 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Keep the denominator or bottom number. So now we have the improper fraction. So how do we get that to a percentage? 
well the int is if you will hear percentage and you have a fraction multiply by a hundred Yes, so we multiply by a hundred over one. So now, since we are multiplying and dividing, we are allowed to cancel. Not allowed to cancel when you plus and minus, but when you multiply and divide. So we have zeros that we may cancel. So now we may multiply tops, 13 times 10. 130 bottoms 1 times 1 is 1 remember this is percentage which is the same as 130 percent 130 divided by 1 simply 130 so it's 130 percent it is possible to get the answer bigger than 100%. I mean, just imagine you buy something for 50 Rand. If you sell it for 100 Rand, you made 100% profit. You doubled what you sell it for. But nothing prevents you selling it more than 100 Rand. You can even sell it for 150 Rand, that would be a 200% increase. So since you often think of percentages in terms of marks and you think, oh, but so you can't get more than 100% for a test, well, there are other scenarios where it's possible to get more than 100%. So just for those that were wondering, a side note. So now number two, now we are given the percentages and we need to change this into the fraction form, equivalent fraction form. So for number A, we are given 42%, but now we know the definition of percentage means it's something over, yes, 100. And now it's simply a matter of simplifying. So, 2 can definitely go into 42 and in 100. So, let's see, 2 goes into 42, 21. 2 goes into 100, 50 times. Okay, so anything that can go into 21 and 50. 3 can go into 21, but it can't go into 50. 4 can't go into 21, 5 can't. 6 can't, 7 can, but it can't go into 50, 7 times 7 is 49, the next one is 56, no, that won't work. Uh, it doesn't seem anything will work, so it's, so it's the same as 21 over 50 in simplest form. So you try now number B on your own, give you a bit of time. I have to change 118% to a fraction, the equivalent fraction. I'm sure you all know the first step, simply writing it over something as a as a hundred. Whenever you hear percentage, you think something over hundred. If you want to change to fraction. Now the question is, is this in simplest form? Well, I know 2 can go into both, 
2 go into 180, half of 118 is there for 59, eh? Half of 100 is 50. Is there anything that can go into 50 and 59? Well, 9 plus 5 is 14, 3 can't go in there, 5 plus 0 is 5, 3 can't go in there, 4 won't go into 59. For anything to be divisible by 4, it has to have an even digit at the end. 5 can't go into 59, you will have to have a 5 or a 0 at the end. 6 can't go into 59, 6 times 10 is 60. 7 anyway can't go into 50. Uh, it seems this is in simplest form. Okay, so now number 3. Determine 6% of 250. Okay, so what's percentage? Something over 100. In this case, 6 over 100. What does off mean? Yes, multiply by 250, which is the same as 250 over 1. So, let's see, can we cancel some of the factors? Well, yes, a 0 and a 0, we may cancel those. 5 can go into 25 and 10. How many times does 5 go into 10? Twice. 5 in 25, 5. 2 and 6 can even cancel. 2 goes once, 2 goes 3 times. So we can multiply tops. 3 times 5 is 15. Bottoms, 1 times 1 is 1. 15 over 1 is the same as 15. And note, there's no percentage. We calculate the percentage of something. It won't give us a bit. A percentage. Six percent of two hundred and fifty is simply fifteen, not fifteen percent. Okay, so you try number B, eighty eight percent of forty. I'm sure you all could do the first step, percent means simply something out of 100, in this case 88, off means multiply, whenever you're, we hear off we think multiply, 40 is the same as 40 over 1. Next step is you will see if you can cancel some of the factors out. So we can cancel zeros. Well, let's see. To ten, 2 can go into 10 5 times. 2 can go into 4 twice. 5 can't go into 88, there's no 0 or 5 at the end, 5 can't go into 2. So now we will have to multiply out tops, 88 times 2, well 80 times 2 is 160, 8 times 2 is 16, 160 plus 16 is 176, so we have 176 Bottom 5 times 1 is 5. What kind of fraction do we have here? Yeah, ball. Improper fractions. So now we, well, no. Yeah, now we can change to a 
Yes, mix fraction. So 5 goes into 17. How many times? 3 times. 3 times 5 is 15. Remainder 2. 5 go into 26. Well, 5 can go into 25. 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. Remainder of 1. At the top, always keep the bottom or the denominator the same. So it's the same as 35 and a fifth. That is what 88% of 40 is. So if it was a test, it was like as if you got 35 and a fifth. But yeah, it's not as if we assign fifths in tests. Not something you will see often. Though not impossible. So let's do a few word problems. Number five. Jerepo has two more cartons. One contains five gram of fat per 80 milliliter. If you see or hear per, you think divide. So we have five gram per 80 milliliter okay so that's the one scenario the other contains 12 grams per per divide 200 milliliter of milk express the fat content Per carton as a percentage, which carton contains less fat? We can only do this calculation if both use the same measurement. So this is gram per milliliter, this is gram per milliliter. If this was kilograms per milliliter, then you would first either make both kilograms or both grams. If this was liters, you will either have to make, make both milliliters or liters. So you have to have the same units of measurements before you can do that. Once you, we have the same units of measurements, we can simply ignore them. So now we can simply say, well, we have 5 over 80. We will have to multiply by 100 if we want a percentage. Same on this side. We have 12 over 200, we have to multiply by 100 over 1 to get the percentage. Now it's simply seeing what we can cancel in terms of factors. So we can cancel zeros here. 2 can go into 10 5 times, 2 can go into 8 4 times. We may multiply tops, 5 times 5 is 25. 4 times 1 is 4. Improper fraction. So how many times does 4 go into 25? 6 times 4 gives 24. We have a remainder of 1. 24 plus 1 gives 25. So the 1 at the top always, the numerator. We always keep the bottom, the denominator the same. So it's the same as six and a quarter percent. So that's the fat content of that more container. So now let's determine the fat content of the other one. <laughs> so we multiply and divide, we are allowed to cancel, so zero and a zero. Another zero and another zero. Two go into twelve six times. So we have one, we have six. Six times one is six at the top. One times one is one at the bottom. So this is equal to six and it's a percentage. So the question was which carton contains less fat? Well, 6% is less than 6 and a quarter percent. So it is the 12 gram per 200 milliliter carton. That is the one that contains 
less fat. Number six, Marissa earned 20,000 Rand per month. She decides to invest one tenth of her money at 8% simple interest per year. A, what amount does she invest? Well, one tenth. She invests one tenth of her money. So, what is one tenth of twenty thousand? So we have twenty thousand. We want one tenth. So that's multiply by one tenth. Cause off. She decides to be it's one tenth of her money. So one tenth of means multiply by a money which is 20,000 so since we are multiplying and dividing we can cancel zeros so it's the same as 2,000 rand so now the question is how much interest will she earn at the end of the year Well, she gets 8% interest per year on the 2,000. So we have 8% of 2,000 Rand. So it's 2,000 Rand times percent something over 100. In this case, 8. So now we can divide, we can cancel the zeros so we in fact have 20 times 8 which is 160 rand so this once of 20,000 that she invested a tenth of which is 2,000 rand it will be 160 rands worth of interest. So now number C, how much money will be in an investment of the five years? <coughs> so simple interest means every year it will be exactly the same amount of interest that you obtain. So it's 160 for one year. So for five years, it will be 160 Rand times five. So 100 times five is 500. 60 times five is 300, so it's 800 Rand. Okay, we, had, we made the assumption, this question is actually not asked that clearly because her salary is per month. We assume she just took one month salary and invested that for a year. If she took every month the salary, every month salary and invested it, it would be obviously a much bigger answer, much, and a much more complicated question. You could actually read that very easy into this question. This question was not asked that clearly, but yeah, for grade 8 level, we assume they actually meant it was just one month. Actually, should have made a statement here as part of the question. That this was that one of her 12 months salary, she took 10% and invested that for a year at the simple interest so your task is exercise 13.10 number 3c and the word problem lovely word problem number four i'm sure you are going to have fun with number four <laughs> 